in regards to why protection training is so important. So, and I've told this before you too, but for our new listeners who never heard, this is a very important story. Alonzo was my first import red male in 2010. Um, he was a house slash yard dog, right? Mm-hmm. Usually when I'm walking them, I take them from the backyard into the house and out the front door versus out of the backyard, period. <clears throat> Even though we had a gate to go through the backyard. So, and this is after he's been fully trained. He had a brevet already. He had a BH. He's had a CGC, a CGCA, completely dialed in. Sure. As I was walking out the front door, and I didn't put a leash on him because I know he listens to me. Mm-hmm. I was going to put a leash on after we get outside, right? As I walked out the front door, guess who's walking towards the front door? Who, oh, the mailman? <laughs> a black guy. So you know he was like, oh, shit. I'm going to get his ass, right? Sure. And... What did the postman do? He runs. Oh no. What did Alonzo do? Run after him. When Alonzo ran after him, all I knew is that we've done this scenario before. So as soon as he ran, I said, Alonzo, couche. Boom. He dropped. He dropped. <laughs> nice. Now, had he not been trained. Had he bit that postman, however so severe, I would have been sued. I probably had to file bankruptcy. The family would have been chaos because most people who own Dobies ain't calling their homeowners insurance and letting you know I got a Doberman as a pet. That's right. That's right. And that's what we always, you know, try to stress to our our uh, our clients that get our puppies. It's the most important thing is to put that that protection training into them. Uh, to get the obedience because they do come with liabilities if you do not. I mean, having a dog is a a luxury. It's sure. not a requirement unless you a unless you um, see an impaired, right? So mm-hmm. it's a luxury to have a dog. But sure. when you do have one, know that they're still animals. Sure. And certain things may trigger them. That's why training is always continuous. It's always ongoing um and you never can really finish you always got to tune them up because if you notice if you haven't done obedience with your dog say in two or three four months he, he loses like oh, what i'm supposed to do oh, yeah okay yeah. now i got it. exact it takes a little yeah. while for them to get reacclimated into it yep right yeah right. i see it i see it now you know with that said um what is the standard uh, for you, in your perspective, if someone wanted to, you know, actually come to your breeding service, um, you know, your stud service and breed a female with you, what standard, what, you know, what actually do you look for in a female? Because I know when I initially came to you, you know, you started, you know, breaking it down to me like you need these, you know, these health tests, the DNA tests, you know, you need to do this, you need to do that. What information you can give to our viewers that if they're looking to get their, you know, their their female bred with you, what, what are you looking for? Well, you know, the, the, the awareness of these Dobermans and the genetic mutation diseases that they can inherit have become uh, very prevalent and known. So that means a lot of these people who call me out, they've already had the, uh, the, the necessity, the, the necessary test done. So they're doing their due diligence. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are other things they could do to improve the, the litter like getting the elbows and hips, or if they certified after they're two years of two years of age, do a Hollister test. Those certain things that can enhance uh, for you as to be knowledgeable about your dog. Thus, um, raising the the price of of the puppy because you've done extensive testing. Sure. So for me to be qualified, number one, I like to see some kind of health test, some kind of genetic test, like uh, yeah. Have they been VWD or DCM1, DCM2, DM? Have they had their thyroids, um, blood work done? Sure. Those are the things that I would like to see. Do all of them have that? 90 to 80 to 90% of them haven't had all of them. Mm-hmm. They've had the VWD and the DCM, but they didn't get the yeah. DMs, right? So with that being said, this is why I make sure that my studs are clear of all of the net, all the genetic mutated uh, genes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so at least if a dog does have two copies of DCM1 
or one copy of DCM2, the puppies may not genetically get it because my dog is thus far clear of those things. Yeah, it just gives it a better opportunity to uh, to have those puppies come out clear. Uh, now, in your perspective, you know, with having the OFA certification on the hips and elbows and other things that you can do like thyroids and eyes and things like that, does that ensure to have a longer health so our viewers can understand that, you know, nothing is guaranteed in these puppies. Anything can, can happen in these dogs, you know? So I just want to make sure that the perspective that you have, you know, and the knowledge that you have to share to our viewers, does that like guarantee a longer uh, life? Let me tell you something. And we can't guarantee shit. Right. You know, um, unfortunately, um, like Alonzo, he passed away at 10 years of age. Um, he didn't die from DCM1. He didn't die from any of those genetic mutated diseases. He died from um, kidney cancer. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, it's nothing's guaranteed. But as a reputable or responsible breeder, all you can do is do the most you can on your dogs. Yeah. You know? Um, we we make plans all the time, but at the end of the day, God makes the final decision on what sure. will or not happen. Yeah. Um, but that to me, that is the that is the ultimate um, thing that we as pet owners and animal lovers have to understand that is a high probability that we will outlive all of the pets that we have in our life. And it's unfortunate because a lot of these pets, whether they cats, I'm a cat owner too, and dogs, they have done something to us or for us that no human can do. And for me, what my pets have done for me, even during my depression years, 12 years ago, is that they stayed consistent. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when, when I was sad, it was still happy. Yeah. When I needed their comfort, they were still there. And most humans cannot be consistent throughout their life like an animal can. So that's why you know as a pet owner when something's wrong with your dog because his physical response is not what you're used to 30 days out of 30, 30 days out of a month versus 31 days. You know, it's like, wait, something's wrong. And those are the things that we have to, as pet owners, understand. Nothing's guaranteed. They're going to go to the vet, but more than me and you go to the doctor. <laughs> That's 100%, man. <laughs> they poop wrong, they go into the vet. That's they right. They cough wrong, they go into the vet. They move slow, they go into the vet. They limp, they go to the vet. Yeah, when their character changes and you know, and the and they're treating you a little different, yeah, you always worry about that. When we, when we, when we are limping, when we pooping wrong, when when we're not feeling good, we just lay down. Mm -hmm. We ain't going to the doctor every time, right? That's true. So for me, it, it's we have to make sure that that we are responsible. But again, nothing's guaranteed. Yep. yep. Even when I'm I'm providing superior stud service people ask me all the time or oh, uh, can you guarantee uh, what's my guarantee ain't shit guarantee right it's it's because we can do all the progesterone tests yep. we can do all the sperm count that don't mean she gonna take mark you know that me and you personally we, we bred and she didn't come pregnant we, we can't guarantee it but what we can do on a contractual basis if they've done the proper um, progesterone tests and stuff, we can say, hey, next time we breed, I won't charge you. We'll run it back. Sure, like, sure, sure, sure. If, if somebody, when people hit me up, tell me, oh, well, can you guarantee? I ain't guaranteeing shit. Go to somebody else. Yeah. You know, because. But we put everything in place to get, to try to make sure that, you know, you know, when everything goes right, it will go right. <laughs> facts. So, and, yeah. you know, and again, when we do when the, when the puppies are conceived, we're jumping with glee because we know there's a 50% chance that she probably won't get pregnant. Then there's a 50% chance that she probably will. Sure. Right? So, but we make sure that we do doing everything we can. And again, yeah. nothing's guaranteed. Yeah. And now, you know, going into the, the stud service that you provide, um, you know, as, as you being knowledgeable as yourself, what, 
when you look for a new stud in your in your camp or the studs that you have now um at the point of you reaching out to find a breeder um what are you looking for in an actual stud good question um before i look at pups i'm looking at the parents i'm looking at what the parents have personally achieved i don't want to hear that shit about champion bloodline from great grandparents i don't even look like my great my great grandparents were frenchmen mm -hmm. i don't look like one right i don't talk like one i just have their last name right sure. so for me it's like i look at what the parents like what have they personally achieved now that sets the stage for me at least one of the parents have to have more than one protection title they got to have a ztp or, or igp1 both of them right mm -hmm. um the mom could have an obedience and she may have one protection title but i'm looking for what the parents have done from that point i let the breeders know that i need to have the most dominant one i need to have the one that's kicking ass that's always into fights that's always taking the food that's chasing the ball the most, that's taking the ball and running with the ball the most. Those are the things that I want. In order for me to get into that position, 